So what I know about smoking meat could fit into a thimble, and it's really not much, but there are a couple of things that I do remember. One of them, the ideal temperature for smoking meat is about 225. So we're back in the kitchen and we're about to put our pork, well we're not quite about to put our pork out on the barbecue, but we're about to get going and have a look at our pork and see how it's looking. But first I thought I'd tell you guys a little bit about why I don't, or why I haven't barbecued in a whole long time uh, at this house. So you would think, you've all been here in my kitchen. And so you know that the door right here goes out onto this beautiful covered deck. And you would think that this would be a little bit of paradise to barbecue on, but it is not. <laughs> It is so hot out here right now. The sun has been beaten down on this. And you know, thank goodness we put up the shade cloth because that really does make quite a difference. But it's just scorching hot on here. I am not going to be standing out here cooking at this time of day. And I'm not going to wait until 10 o'clock <laughs> before I come out here and cook. So, this deck, as lovely as it is, does not get used for barbecuing, so. Okay, so again, here's my kitchen, right? And I have got to go <laughs> all the way through here, all the way through the Dave Cave, which is a disaster because of the electrical problems we're having. Uh, I'll tell you about those in another video. And I have to come out here. And I have to come down the stairs. And out to the backyard. To be able to barbecue. Uh, because I've got shade over here. It gets much cooler over here. I get a breeze blowing over here. And then here is my barbecue. Which I've had for years. But has probably been used... I don't know, maybe a half dozen times uh, in the five years that we've lived here. Nisi, this part is for you. So I know you mentioned that you get kind of, uh, you've never started your own gas barbecue and stuff. So they're all basically the same. This one has got three burners down here and it's got three corresponding knobs now you might have four burners or two burners or one burner but you're most likely going to have a corresponding knob for each burner and you're going to have an igniter button so i also over here have one of these little that's i don't know that that's been used more than once or twice the whole time we've owned this uh anyway and so down here is your propane tank now it is currently in the closed position. Dave does insist on being the one who changes the propane tanks and hooks them up in the spring and, and hooks everything up in the fall and checks it out. But other than that, he really does not touch the barbecue. So it's all me when it comes to the barbecue. So I know how to turn it on and off. Anyway, so let's get back down under here. Here's my propane, and you can see it's hooked up here to my stuff. And I'm going to turn this on. Oh, I'm going to just twist that until it's on. And I'm going to come up here. Now, I'm only actually going to be turning on one of my burners today. And it's going to be this one. So I'm going to turn this to the lighting position. You can see that little 
little lightning flash there and then I'm just going to push the igniter button and that just fires right up. This hasn't been on for a while so I'm going to go ahead and start them all up so I can turn them all to on, hit my igniter and I don't know how well you can see that down in there but there's everything lit up well, actually, let's just go through and I'll show you how you turn it off again. Okay, so that's super easy. Uh, so you're all done cooking and you just turn your knobs into the off position. And then you come directly down here and you close this righty tighty. <laughs> righty tighty lefty loosey. So, yeah, so there you go. And that's it. Everything's off. You might want to leave. I usually leave the, leave the lid up and let it cool down for a little bit before I close it all up. Clean your grills, all that kind of fun stuff. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to modify my electric grill into a smoker, which I have not done before. So I don't know how well it will work, but in theory, <laughs> in theory, it should be wonderful. So let's give it a try. So here now is my uh, pork loin that I, that you watched me rub last night. <laughs> that sounds kind of, <laughs> and anyway, I'm going to sprinkle a little more rub on it and give it another good rub down and I want to make sure I get these ends this time. I didn't get those very well last time. So I've actually had this apple wood just sitting with all my outdoor stuff waiting for the day I was going to actually do some barbecue again. So as I mentioned I'm going to try to turn my gas grill into some kind of a smoker thing i need to do obviously this isn't on and hot the first thing i need to do is cut this open <laughs> and i need to get some of these super super dry apple wood pieces into this bucket here i'm gonna leave it soaking in this bucket while i get everything else ready Okay, so this is what's going to happen. This is going to sit here. Oh, wait. I have to wash another piece. I'll be right back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. And I'll just set it there. And I'm also going to take this off. So that that is exposed. Because I am going to, once this is burning, this is going to be my heat source. And then this is going to be my drip pan. And up here is where my roast is going to sit. And then I've also got some potatoes that I'm going to put like over here and, and down over here, right? This is going to be my drip and mop pan. So <laughs> you will see what that means as we're going here. If you are, are a smoker, if you smoke stuff, you know what you're doing already. It's been a long time, and I've never done it in one of these barbecues. I had a smoker when we lived in Oregon and loved using it, um, but don't haven't had one since I got here, and yeah, so this is going to be a pure experiment. I'm glad you're here for the ride. <laughs> so here is what I'm going to use for my mop and and uh, drip pan. So this is a Moscow mule. It is made with real ginger and it does have alcohol in it. I um, found it to be very gingery, <laughs> enough so that I don't want to drink these, but I think mixed with this fabulous Monticello Cellars wine vinegar garlic lovers is going to be fantastic as a mop over this meat. So here's what we're gonna do. And I'm going to open this. And just pour it into this pan. And 
And I do have one more can of it if I should need it. If this dries up, then I will want to add some more. And I'm just going to add, I don't know, 10 or 12 little drops of the vinegar just to kick that up a little bit when I mop it. On, I'm only gonna fire up this one burner, so turn it to start, push my igniter, and I'm actually going to turn it way down low. And I'm gonna close this. And my ideal temperature here is 225, so I'm going to let this warm up for a little bit while I go and grab my roast. So you can see there, I'm just between two and 250. So that should be a pretty good temperature. Something else I remember, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this open. And something else I remember is that you do not wanna see when your unit is closed, you don't wanna see a lot of smoke. Now I put a couple of my wood chunks wrapped in tin foil in here. And I'm hoping to see a big cloud of smoke when I open it, uh, because that will indicate that um, my wood is working properly and it's smoking and not on fire. Now, alternatively, of course, it could be on fire. So <laughs> let's find out. Oh, well, not a huge cloud of smoke. Um, but it's not on fire either. So I'm going to go ahead and put the third thing that I remember is that you want to put your meat fat side down or I mean fat side up. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> that this is my fatty side. Yep, sure is. So I'm going to put that side up. Now I've added another little griddle here. I'm going to set that over top of there. And I'm going to go ahead and close this and bring it back up to temperature. And then I'll want to check it again to see if this wood is actually starting to smoke or not. Okay, let's see what happens when we open this up. I need to get these potatoes on here. That's why I'm opening it, opening it again. You don't want to be opening and closing and opening and closing your smoker. You kind of want to leave it. I usually check mine about once every half hour, give it a good mop and then close it up again. So I'm gonna get those potatoes on here and I'm gonna give it a mop, show you what that means. And yeah, we'll go from there. I am getting some smoke out of here now. So that is a good thing. I'm just gonna throw these potatoes. I don't wanna keep them out of the way. And now this is mopping. So this is my mop. I know you've seen this in my kitchen before, but I'm just gonna, that's that ginger, that ginger cooler and that little bit of vinegar. We're just gonna mop that on there to keep it moist. Push this back under here so it's catching all the drippings. Give it a good mop again. And bring that out here. All right, now we're gonna close this up again. I might uh, move this just a touch. Now it seems to be on fire. We just want it to smoke. Anyway, let's see if we get a smoke ring or not. There, check that out. Well, that is a nice looking smoke ring. <laughs> and the true taste test, or the true test, is in the taste. Oh. Mmm. You wanna try, honey? Yeah, fine. It's fine? Mm-hmm. Sure is tender. Mm-hmm. Not dry. No, uh-uh. For a loin. That's pretty fabulous, right? So that was yesterday and it turned out really good and I'm actually cooking the leftovers now into something else that's gonna be a whole other video if I if I get to it, if I film the whole thing, I don't know. I have so much video and and 
I, I get behind on it because I don't know what I'm, you know, I, I need to, I need to set myself a schedule so that I'm recording on one day and editing the next and then recording and editing and recording and editing and, and maybe not trying to put out a video every day because not that I, not that I do. I mean, I certainly don't put out a video every day, but during the week, I seem to not have time. I know I can schedule them ahead of time, so maybe I need to start doing some of that as well. And I don't know, maybe I need to narrow my focus a little bit. What do you think? Um, should I cut something out? I, I, I need to get back to the Techie Tuesdays because, because those are very helpful for a lot of people. And now that gardening season is winding down, over here I can have more time although I do still have that big project that I'm working on that's taking up so much of my time during the week that I'm not I'm not finding I'm not having extra time to you know to be well I video but I I mean I have lots of video and lots of footage but when it's a week or two old you don't want to put it up anymore right so I don't know there's always that so anyway Thanks for coming and hanging out. I'm I'm experimenting again with barbecuing because it has been a long, long time. And that probably wasn't my favorite, I'll be honest. But it was a good start. I need to find something that's going to let me make more smoke. Because that held in the smoke really good and it held its temperature really good. But it wasn't enough smoke. Uh, it did it had a little bit of a smoky flavor, but not not that much. So, um, and let's see. Also, next time I think I need to add some more sweet to my mop. <laughs> and if you watch the whole video, that will make sense to you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and coming and hanging out with me. And if you have a comment, please leave it below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you certainly should. I know I would appreciate it. And anything else I should say? I love you all. Take care of yourself. I will see you soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.